What's up, everybody? My name is Godzia, and welcome back to another episode of Wonderful Every Day Down the Rabbit Hole. Last episode, uh, Yuki walked around the school getting very, very dizzy after meeting Ayana, uh, again. And there was something else that happened, and I forgot already. Cool. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, let's just get back into this. <laughs> I saw it earlier, but now everyone's talking about it. They were linking it on other sites. Oh yeah, that's what happened. We were on the rooftop and talking about uh, the end of the world, because this game takes place in 2012, and I can only assume that that's the plot device that they're basing everything off of. And I guess before I get further into this, I should address a comment that I got last, ep last episode informing me that uh, this game is actually kind of like a... I don't really know how to dis how I would word it. It's like a remake, but way better version of some other visual novel from long ago. Like, I say long ago, it was like 2003 or something like that. Uh, titled Something Sky or whatever. <laughs> and that's kind of like comically bad or something. <laughs> But it includes spoilers for this game, since it's like the uh, story basis for this game. So, yeah, I'm not going to check it out, and I'm probably not going to do it on my on my channel either, if it's that bad. But <laughs> I might check, I might look at it, at least after I finish this game. But who knows how long it'll be until then. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah, the posts were all about the WebBot project. It's just like I said. I wonder if it's real. What? The WebBot project says the world will be destroyed on the 20th. You saw the link, didn't you? It's... It said that's what the data was showing. I know, but that's scary. You know... Huh? Male student has a sprite! Finally! <laughs> ah, Minakami. And you're dumbass number one. Um, that's not my name. I'm Kiyoshi. Yokoyama Kiyoshi. Kind of gives me Sylvain vibes. <laughs> With the frickin' unbu slightly unbuttoned shirt and the hairdo. <laughs> oh, that's your name. Um, uh, Minakami, would you please remember it this time? We are in the same class, after all. <laughs> that's probably not at all a very good voice, but... He just reminds me of Sylvain so far, so that's what we're going with. The boy in front of me was Yokoyama Kiyoshi. Nah, who cares about him? <laughs> Average looks, average grades. Not anyone I cared about. Though I wasn't really interested in boys anyway. Yeah, we know. It's awfully rare for you to talk to me. I actually don't want to talk to you at all. But I have something I need to ask you, so whatever. Something you want to ask me? Wow, I'm honored. Did this guy like me or something? Gross. <laughs> that WebBot project you were talking about, is there really a site like that where they predict the future? Of course there is. That's one of those web bots that automatically goes around the internet and collects various information to store in a searchable database, right? Um. Then it's simply a bot that generates HTTP requests, retrieves some HTML documents, searches for keywords within it, and saves them in the database. Then it can analyze the document's anchor tags and use the first file's links to retrieve additional HTML files. I am not a computer science major, I don't understand what you just said. <laughs> I don't get it. To put it simply, the WebBot is a search engine with spiders and web crawlers. Um. <laughs> What's this WebBot project that's supposed to be making those predictions, though? What's the website? Uh, I don't really know myself. It's just a topic on the message board. The underground message board. You know about it, then? No, not really, but I've heard rumors. Actually, have you ever been to the site? Yeah, of course I have. Then could you give me the URL? Sure, but you have to register to get past the front page, and you can't even register without a referral. Registration? I thought it was anonymous. Yeah, but what would be the point if it was open to the public? So that's how it works. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's fine. Anyway, send me the URL and then give me a referral. What's your phone's email address? I can send it right now. I don't have one. Huh? You don't have a cell phone? It takes me off that you think everyone has one. Don't go around assuming everyone has a cell phone. Really? Um, you don't, huh? 
What's your problem? I don't have one. It doesn't exist. But still, everyone browses that site with their cell phones. I don't think I've ever seen anyone go on there on a computer. Just send it to my computer. I always get on the internet from a desktop computer. Sure. Tell me your email address, then. Here. I wrote down my email address and passed it to him. You have a girl's number? Wait, you don't have a phone. <laughs> this is a free mail account. That's right. Is there a problem with that? No, but don't you have a real email address? I do, but I'm not giving it to you. No. Um, I have a favor to ask. What? If I became your referrer, that means we're friends, right? Ow! <laughs> you shouldn't say such nasty things with a grin on your face. So then, what are you trying to say? There's this party pretty soon. If you'd like to come, I could get you in. Ow! You remember what happened the last time you guys tried hitting on me, don't you? I hate men. If you start talking like that again, I'll do to you what I did to them. But otherwise, I don't mind. Um, we might- actually might need you to do something like that. We need someone strong. Huh? Why did they need someone strong for a party? This guy was weird. I don't really know what you mean, but I don't mind participating. Hell yeah! We haven't had a main attraction at all since Shiryana died. Hmm. That was more confusing. Why was I replacing Shiryama? He was that idiot who died in an accident, right? What, what's he got to do with it? Anyway, looks like it really was the underground message board. The girls earlier said there were a bunch of links posted, so it shouldn't be hard to investigate. I hope I can figure out what's going on. Aside from that, most message boards like that were full of people slandering their teachers and classmates. Which meant they were probably talking about me too. For some reason, that was a bit embarrassing. Well, d <laughs> I remember some of my classmates from high school would make, like, throwaway Facebook or Instagram accounts back when I still used Instagram, which was, like, just 10th grade. <laughs> Where they would just, like, hashtag roast other students. They never did me, though, because I'm perfect, obviously. No, it's because I was unpopular and blended in. <laughs> Yuki! Huh? Oh. <sighs> what are you making that stupid face for? Class is over. Is it? I was asleep. You were awake! Don't make excuses like that! So what- so were you thinking about something? You were the one that was thinking about something. Huh? You were both thinking about me, right? She's so beautiful. I wish I was like her. Stuff like that. Takasa, let's go! You ignored me. <laughs> Yuki, we won't mind if you go home without us. Hmm, I have something to do, so I can't go home just yet. Huh? You don't have to do that for us, we'll be fine. Yeah, I don't want to keep you waiting. It's not like I'm doing it for you or anything. What was that? My best Kagami impression. <laughs> don't make fun of me! My cheek hurts. <laughs> but I really do have stuff I need to do. I'll probably be here until you guys finish up, so call me when you're done. How are we going to call you when you don't even have a cell phone? <laughs> Obviously, you just open the nearest window and scream. <laughs> don't know. What do you mean, don't know? Something was bothering me. There were a lot of things that were still bothering me. Takashima Zakuro. I wanted to know a little more about her. Okay. Takashima's class was right over here. Hello there, another new character. Yasuko. Alright. Oh, Minakami. No, you're... Um... Jeez, how many times do I have to tell you before you remember? Got it, I'll remember it this time. You said that last time too. Did she actually say her name? No. Did I? Yokoyama Yasuko, Kiyoshi's little sister. Oh. <laughs> okay. Um, who's Kiyoshi? How can you not remember my brother? He's in your class! Like I said, I'll remember it this time. No, not remembering someone in the same class is a little strange. Come on, he's the one you punched when he was l hitting on you. Oh, that guy's gross. Um, please don't call my brother gross. For the record, we are related, so it kind of feels like you're talking about me, too. 
So then, what's up, Yoko Yamakiyoshi's little sister? What? Say my name! Um, Yokoyama. Nick? <laughs> is, that, is, is that supposed to be Nick? Knock, knock, knack, knack? <laughs> I don't know. No, that's not even a girl's name! Yokoyama Nakata. Okay, I guess that's probably a reference to something. I don't get it, though. <laughs> No, that's not even a real name. It's Yokoyama Yasuko, and you'd better remember it this time. Oh, right, that's what it was. I hope you're ready for the consequences if you don't remember it next time. Like I said, I'll remember it this time. Really? Trust me. Hmm? Why are you still here? Kagami went to her club. What's wrong, Yokoyama Sister Ko? You're going to make me mad. I'll hurt you. My name is Yasuko. Ah, Yasuko. I knew that. No, you didn't. Of course I did. You should believe the words of your elders. <laughs> okay. <laughs> my brother said you're pretty smart. Of course, my mind has even grasped the secrets of the universe. What are my three sizes? <laughs> okay. <laughs> From the top, bust 100 centimeters, waist 100, hip 101. What am I, a cube? It's a joke. They're actually 102 for your bust, 20 for your waist, and 102 for your whips. Whips? Hips. <laughs> no, my body isn't that great. Is that all you wanted to know? That was a joke. What? I don't understand why you would be mad about that. I try to make a joke of my own. This conversation isn't going anywhere, ha. Huh? <laughs> no kidding. Alright, so what did you actually want to ask me? Will the world end this month on the 20th? Is it true that the end of the world is approaching? Looks like that guy by the window is just... is thinking about that too. He'd probably be a better conversation partner. So look at his dumb face. He's like, hmm. Fuck, I need to return that DVD today. God damn it. Please answer me. Why are you asking me? I heard you were the only one that got along with Takashima Zakuro. So I thought you would know the truth. It wasn't like I got along with Takashima that well. Jeez, everyone just assumed that. <sighs> well, let me be serious. Long ago, people gathered to get rid of all the conflict in the world. They tried to bring all the weapons in the world to one place. Then all those weapons coalesced into a single organism. This organism was incredibly violent. It had the form of an all-purpose humanoid battle weapon. What's that? It was the pacifist Robo Gandhi. What are you talking about? <laughs> you just said it was incredibly violent, so how is it a pacifist robot? It employs pacifism against its enemies. Pacifist mode! Pacifism, pacifism, pacifism! All systems pacifist! Pacifist robot, launch! Like that, he attacks with pacif pacifism. Pa little bit, I can't... <laughs> that word is hard to say now. He would lose, though. He couldn't beat anyone with pac pacifism. So that's a fucking frisk. <laughs> yeah, he always gets clobbered. Actually, there's something I'd like to ask you. Why would the world end so suddenly? Huh? How did we get back to the serious conversation? <laughs> we have to go with the music, you know? What do you mean? I was serious the whole time. You were just making up a bunch of stuff, weren't you? The words of the wise may appear irrelevant at first, but after careful consideration, you'll find they were linked to the true message. Yeah, I'm still trying to figure out what my senile grandfather was talking about on his deathbed. <laughs> the apes! The apes, Owen! They're coming! <laughs> that did not happen. <laughs> I'm always serious. I don't mess around. I see. So you're saying that the story about Robo Gandhi was foreshadowing for something else? If it is... <laughs> How do you put a virtual bookmark? Do I just gyazo this image and just be like, ah, yes, mm-hmm, that makes sense, Robo Gandhi, the culprit all along. <laughs> now, of course it was. I'm not one of those scenario writers that just keeps writing and writing and can't wrap up all his plot points. Who are you talking about? <laughs> it's a secret. But back to what you were talking about before, man, the fourth wall is really brittle here. Yeah, everyone is saying that the world will be destroyed on the 20th. So you believe them. But it's strange, isn't it? Two people have died in such a short time. Nah, several people die every 10 seconds or something like that. I don't know. <laughs> Def ah, excuse me. Def 
definitely is strange that two people from the same school fell to their deaths one after the other. But why exactly does that mean the world's going to end? They say that's the reason why Takashima committed suicide. How do they know that's the reason she committed suicide? Well, tons of people are talking about it on the message board. And that email is going around. So she'd been looking at the underground message board too. But what email was she talking about? What email are you talking about? What's going around? This. This. Huh? Oh boy. Ooh. Okay. From Takashima Zakuro, subject, no subject. Through death- should I read this in, Z in Zakuro's voice? Let's do it. Through death I have been reborn as a warrior. Or so they said, but it hurts. I have no body, but it still hurts. It hurts because I've been broken. Therefore, everyone must die. You will die in six days. All of you will die. I see. Scrolling to... An image of... Bodies? Bloody bodies? Who were these supposed to be? The girl she was with? And her? Then who sent the email? Robo Gandhi? <laughs> what is this? This is a very distorted image. I don't think there's any gore I have to censor, right? I mean, I never censored anything in Corpse Party. This should be fine. This, yeah, yeah, these are a girl she was with, right? That, the one in the bottom right, Sakura. And then there's the other two. <laughs> the picture was a bit fuzzy, but it was definitely a picture of her suicide. Who would take such a distasteful picture? This is Takashima's email address. Wait a second, were you friends with her? I wasn't. I haven't even seen her before. Why would I be getting an email from her? Then how do you know it's her email address? But... If you thought about it, it had to be a prank, but I understood why she was upset. Anyone would be upset if they were sent a freaky picture like this. Well, duh. Were you the only one who got this email? A lot of people in my class did. Not all of them? Not all of them. But my brother said he got one too. Him too, huh? But he was still talking about going to a party. Maybe thoughtless guys aren't as sensitive to horror? <laughs> Senpai, what's happening here? Calm down, just try to stay calm, okay? Calm? There's no way I can stay calm, I'm scared. Okay, here's the question. Why would Takashima send you a picture of her corpse? And look at the camera angle. It must have been taken by a third party. That's because the scene witnessed by Takashima's ghost became a picture and got sent out in the email. I see, you're pretty smart. They're, you're pretty smart, aren't they? That's probably a mistranslation. That's just what people are saying on the message board. Then people on the message board are really stupid. I see. So then, why does a person who took the picture have a shadow? Huh? So there is a culprit or something. Someone who's being fucky-wucky. The shadow was pretty long since it was late in the evening. If you look closely, there's clearly a shadow stretching from the position of the camera. That's her ghost shadow. Do ghosts even have shadows? Either way, the shadow here doesn't have long hair. Takashima's hair was long. Can you show the picture again? Because I did not notice a shadow. Ah. Of course, the outline is blurred. But this looks like the shadow of someone with short hair. Okay. This has to be someone who was passing by them when she committed suicide. They probably took the picture out of morbid interest. And then they used it for this prank. Morishige? But her name is in the email address. They took her phone. Easily, or made a fake one. It would be easy to fool people by registering an email address with her name in it. Want me to show you how easy it is? But now, now, don't worry about it too much. Why not? I'll investigate it. Huh? Even before I promised you, I plan on investigating this anyway. R really? Yeah. You'll really check it out? Yeah, leave it to me. Do you know something about what's going on? That's what I'm trying to figure out, isn't it? For now, just forward that email to my computer. Huh? Not to your phone? Mm, this again? <laughs> yeah, I don't have a phone. That's awfully rare nowadays. Yeah, maybe, but there are still people who don't. 
Anyway, there's no way the world's going to end in the near future. That's ridiculous. Okay, got it. I'm sorry if I bothered you. Alright, time for my club. Do your best. Yokoyama's little sister, huh? She was in the Kendo Club, right? Which meant she was in the same club as Tsukasa and Kagami? Excuse me. Yes? So what was the foreshadowing for? <laughs> huh? The story about Robo Gandhi. You said that was foreshadowing for something or other. But even at the end, it still sounded like you made up something you made up on the spot. The meaning was... You can't save someone with violence alone. It was a criticism of our modern society, and... Hey, that wasn't related to the conversation at all, was it? Not really, no. <laughs> Ugh. Honestly, that picture sent chills up my spine. What the hell was that about? Emailing people pictures of a suicide was beyond juvenile. It scared me a bit, too. But I wondered if I'd really managed to convince Nakata back there. <laughs> Nothing good had happened lately. Takashima Zakuro's classroom. Her desk was decorated with a vase of flowers. Still. No one was in the classroom. An email from Takashima, huh? I don't know who brought up that prank, but that person definitely isn't an exemplary citizen in our modern society. A prank? Oh, this is quite the elaborate prank. I wondered if they had some other motive for the prank. Oh? I sound like a real detective now, don't I? Cool. <laughs> <sighs> I don't really want to go through a dead person's belongings, but... I did promise Yokoyama's sister go, too. There was nothing in Takashima's desk. I suppose that should have been obvious. If there was anything there before, it was probably taken as, art taken as articles of the deceased. Of course. Hmm? Whoa! While I was searching around, I felt something slimy in the back of Takashima's desk. Oh no. What? Is something rotting back there? What's this? It wasn't a solid, but a liquid. Ugh. It was like the slime a snail leaves behind it. I'm going to pretend I didn't see that, but first, I bettered wipe it up. Putting that aside, I carefully looked at the top of her desk. What's this? Spiral Matai? Uh... It must just be the vase, right? What the heck is this? Oh, words. There's words carved on the desk. Okay, it's all in Japanese. Can't read what it says. She had apparently carved those words into her desk. The only way to describe this is creepy. I was under the impression that people thought she was weird because of her personality. But looking at this desk, I could see why. Or did the bullying make her like this? They were just scribbles, but it was spooky to think that this was what she was writing just before her death. I took out the detective kit I'd brought with me. It contained a magnifying glass, a fingerprinting kit, kit a blood testing kit, and more. It cost 18,000 yen, but it was really high quality. God, how much is that? It's like $180, right? If 100 yen is a dollar. That's a lot of money. <laughs> I calmly took the magnifying glass out and examined each of the letters. This life is worth three billion guildens. The third wave. Agu. <laughs> this is... This is... When I looked more closely, I realized that those were the scribbles on my magnifying glass. <laughs> I'm such a trickster. <laughs> okay. Back to work. Brain reverse. Har Megiddo. Nebula Cloud. El Himero. It was all the same. Totally incomprehensible. Yup. Angel Remover. Angel Knight. I am Angel Advise. What is this? I don't get it. I jotted it all down. It would be so convenient if I had a camera right now. Um, what else? Hmm? This is... I couldn't see it very well because it was blurry. Or rather, she scratched it out after writing it. And quite a few times, too. Why would she do that? In one spot, it was like she'd written something several times and crossed it out every time she wrote it. I took out the aluminum powder. This was a very important part of the detective kit. Better question, why did you bring this to school before you knew you were going to be doing shit like this? <laughs> like, alright, gotta pack my bag in the morning. Uh, textbook, yup. Uh, pencil, notebook, paper, 
Binder. Phone. Keys. Magnifying glass. Flashlight. Carbon powder. <laughs> pH strips. <laughs> stamp book. Just random shit. Stamp book. What's that gotta do with detectives? <laughs> <laughs> With this, your secrets will be revealed. I start dusting the desk and taking prints. This detective kit was amazing. I pulled up a bunch of fingerprints, making the letters hard to read. Hey, I'm not getting anything but fingerprints. Well, I guess it was a fingerprint kit. Oh, there are so many fingerprints, I can't read the letters. I kept the fingerprints anyway. <laughs> Maybe they'll come in handy later. It looks, it looks like there are two different sets of, of fingerprints here. You can just notice that at a glance. <laughs> Only two. Made you think about how isolated Takashima was, that almost no one else touched her desk. Putting that aside, the first set was of course Takashima's, but what about the others? Though I need access to a whole database of fingerprints to figure that out. Besides, I wonder if there's a better way to dust the carved letters. Hmm. For now, I do my best to read the rest. It wasn't like there was no chance of it working, right? The same word was written over and over, and each time it had been scratched out. It was a pain to decipher. Um, is this an N? No, wait, it's an M. And this is... Does this say Mamiya? Ah. The... the dude. <laughs> Mamiya... I can't read the rest. Mamiya, as in... The Mamiya Takuji in my class? I mean, it doesn't have to. It's a last name. I don't know how common of one it is, though. Might be the Japanese equivalent of Smith, even though I'm pretty sure that that's, like, Sato, or something like that. Why was his name here? Maybe I should ask Mami Atakaji directly. Though he's hardly ever in class. I didn't see him today, either. Huh. He was kind of hard for me to deal with. I don't know why, but I got a crazy headache whenever I was, when I was near him. Yeah, at the pool. And then he just booped out of existence. Hmm... Just because I was always on the roof wasn't a guarantee that he never came up to the roof. Though I was always on the roof, and I didn't ever run into him. No, oh, that's... the person I always ran into up here. Nayana! Here. <laughs> you look like you're full of spunk today. Yeah, I'm not reading that. <laughs> she parried my greeting skillfully. <laughs> That's just more of, like, an absurd way to start a conversation, but all right. No. <laughs> no, I just followed your lead. For the record, I'm not full of semen. Neither am I. Great. Good. Glad we established this important fact. God. Why is Ayana so crude, though? Like, honestly. I wasn't really talking about a physical substance to begin with, either. I meant you seem energetic. I see. I thought it was one of your trademark jokes. Why are you on the roof, anyway? The same reason you are. The same reason? I'm looking for... Oh, wait, wait, wait. Yeah, okay. I'm looking for Mamiya. I'm also looking for Mamiya. What? Really? Sorry, I just followed your lead. I'm not really looking for anyone. <laughs> Her jokes were kind of hard to follow. But if you're looking for Mamiya... Ayana pointed down from the roof. Huh? Is that? I saw someone in the courtyard. Who's that? He's going to the old pool. Now that you've spotted his shadow, you should probably chase after him. A shadow is a form that you think you want to see, but it is also a form that you don't want to see. So take care when looking at the shadow. That's awfully profound. Yeah, I sound pretty cool. Nah, I wouldn't go that far. Putting that aside, I should probably go chase him down. All that talk about shadows is concerning. Is that supposed to be, like, foreshadowing or an allusion to the possibility that Mamiya is the shadow in that frickin' photo that I didn't even see, so I can't compare it? But, <laughs> whatever. Um, it was around here. Ugh. Not again. Why did this happen? That's... A human figure appeared from the base of the pool, did he? It turned this way. For some reason, it looked like it was expanding. What's this? I'm getting dizzy again. Yeah, that's dude, man. Oh, wowie. Okay. You've got freaky eyes. That's not what you looked like before. 
Not at all. Okay. Two-Face McGee over here, unless you're a different dude? You're not a different guy, are you? Um, hair. No, you're the same dude. Mamiya Takaji. I seriously felt nauseous every time I saw him. Why? What's wrong, Minakami? Oh boy. <laughs> Were you looking for me? Yeah, I have something to ask you. You don't look so good. I I'm sh <laughs> I turned down the opacity, but... Just don't worry about me. I'm feeling great, though. I don't know which one was talking then, but whatever. It's probably meant to have the voices on. Yeah, You see, I knew some shit like that would happen! <laughs> so is this guy just- okay, I don't trust him. So is he gonna be like an actual fucking like bad, 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 bad guy? Or is he gonna be like a Nagito Kokichi So type character? Jesus Christ. What's going on? He was acting a little weird. I'm gonna turn down the opacity so I don't get jump scared every time I right click. Ah, uh, where is that? Here it is. Right around there. Yeah, that works. Why was he so confident? I thought he was a lot more meek. There aren't very many things that could cause a change like that. One was mental disease, and the other was... Drugs? <laughs> Possibly. I felt worse every time we met, and his attitude was changing too. It was possible he'd been smoking something. But it was kind of strange that he didn't smell at all. Smoking with a vaporizer, you say? Nope. Huh? Wouldn't that have to be something tasteless and odorless? That'd be crazy expensive. What are you talking about? <laughs> What's wrong? You look shocked, as if someone just read your mind. Didn't you have a question for me? That's why you came. <laughs> what are you so cheerful for? You're a creepy guy. I see. My name was on Takashima's desk, huh? You did a good job finding that. What? Mamiya, you... Ow! The headache again? Maybe you can't bear to look at someone who's grasped the truth. What? That's ridiculous! Quite. I thought maybe you would understand. I can't write you off as a complete stranger. That's gross. We are complete strangers. The only thing we have in common is our class. Of course. That's the relation between you and I. That's why you deserve no greeting from me. Huh? Because I have to confirm whether or not the person in front of me is a superior human being. What are you... Ouch. Wait, who's actually talking? Oh! <laughs> I'll say it again. Oh, he said those. Oh, I can scroll up and it'll tell me. I see, got it. <laughs> That's why you deserve no greeting from me. Was he always this kind of freak? This kind of... Ouch. My head hurt, seriously. That's right. To put it in words, you're still confined to the second dimension. The second dimension? Yes, that's right. This place, right now, is the two-dimensional world. Your current existence is like that of an ant. What are you talking about? How would a two-dimensional ant comprehend a third dimension? I don't know what you're saying at all. You're not making any sense. One way is for the ant to observe a three-dimensional object passing through the plane of the second dimension. It would observe the object as a square flickering in space. The only part of the third dim- Is it him again? It is. <laughs> the only part of the third dimension the two-dimensional ant's imagination can conjure is its shadow. All this talk about shadows. <laughs> The only thing those living in two dimensions are permitted to watch is the shadow changing from moment to moment. Then how would we three-dimensional humans comprehend the fourth dimension? How would we comprehend the fifth? The sixth? How would we comprehend the dimensions beyond that? That's right. In the same way a two-dimensional being can only imagine us as square shadows, we must imagine the higher dimensions as shadows. He was talking like a madman, but what he was saying... He was referencing Edwin Abbott Abbott's Flatland. Okay, I've never heard of that. That was quite the highbrow reference. Ugh, my head hurt. Why was I so dizzy? He was... Mami Takaji was staring at my face. He wouldn't look away at all. They say a mental patient never looks away from the doctor, because they can't understand how uncomfortable it is for another person to be stared at. Hmm. Mami Takaji never looked away from me. 
It was incredibly uncomfortable. Annoying. I wanted to throw him to the floor and punch him until my headache went away. Actually, that sounded like a good idea. <laughs> Mamiya, come a bit closer. I'll be going now. Hey, I'm talking to you! <laughs> I'm not too fond of getting punched. Huh? Why? Could he really read my mind? Is he saying that again? Oh my god, this fuck this kid is fucked up. <laughs> Can I really read your mind? <laughs> I'll let you chase that particular answer yourself. But if you can't reach it, you'll never know. I was assuming that was Yuki. <laughs> I probably shouldn't. Why did I even check? That was obviously Yuki. Because why would he just randomly go, But if you can't reach it, you'll never know. Mommy Atakuji! <laughs> he just signs all his soliloquies. Mommy Atakuji! Well then, I'll be taking my leave. Mommy Atakuji disappeared. He was so small, and he'd always been meek before, but for some reason I'd felt strangely nervous just looking at him. My hand was balled up into a fist, and my palm was dripping with sweat. Why is it so damn hot? July. Better question, why is it so damn cold? It is May, and it's, like, fucking cold outside. It's been cold for, like, a week and a half. I don't think it's been over 60 since, like, two weeks ago. And it's not like I live in Alaska. I live in New York. What the shit? It's always warm by this time of year. It's May! <laughs> it was snowing somewhere in New York earlier today. I saw it trending on Twitter. <laughs> My head hurt. I wasn't in a good mood either. Was this strange feeling because of the heat? Or something other than that? Something felt strange. Since that time, the landscape I'd known had been changing faster and faster. The world that never changed a bit until now was slowly melting. Yuki! You waited for us, didn't you? It's not like I care about you or anything. Alright, I, I, I guess I can change the text, bo the text box back. So, there we go. You can stop with that gag already. But I have to follow the archetype. I don't know what kind of strange world has an archetype like that. Clearly this one, and that is a essay, Yuki. <laughs> you dare leverage criticism at one merely for being a bit particular with his manner of dress, picked out by his mom, smelling just a tad bit out of the norm, not conforming to the average body type, wearing a unique style of glasses, and maybe having a weird hobby or two. No, and that was really long. <laughs> then what about Krillin? I miss the Dragon Ball guy? I've, I haven't seen DBZ. <laughs> That one was shorter, but it's still completely unrelated. Pfft. There's a lot of references dispersed throughout this, and that's the first one I got. That, technically, I'm, I... <laughs> What's wrong, Yuki? Huh? What do you mean? You've been staring at her faces for a while. Have I? When you do that, it's usually because you want to ask something. Well, it's not a big deal. What's wrong, Yuki? Nothing. Uh, have you gotten any strange emails? What do you mean? What kind of email? Oh, nothing. If you haven't gotten any weird ones, it's not a problem. Did something happen? No, it's not a big deal. Something did happen, didn't it? Is it about Takashima? Yuki. It's not a big deal, but earlier after you guys left, I was talking to Yokoyama... I don't know what that is, Teru. <sighs> Yokoyama blank Teru? There's no one with that name in our school. Is this supposed to be some frickin' another reference? <laughs> Does your well not run dry, Yuki? <laughs> huh? There's not? Uh, it was the little sister of the guy in our class. I think his name was Taikon. Wait, Yokoyama? You mean Yokoyama Kiyoshi? Yeah, yeah, Kiyoshi's little sister, Yokoyama Blabateru. Like I said, there's no Yokoyama Blabateru. You're thinking of Yokoyama Yasuko. Oh yeah, her, Yasuko. So what were you two talking about? Oh, uh, she seemed upset about something or other. What did she say? No, it's nothing important. It's really not a big deal. You were talking about some email earlier. Seems like some weird emails going around. A prank email. Yasuko seemed really upset about it. A weird email? It's nothing. It's just a little prank. The one that says the world will end? You heard about it. 
Not directly, but I overheard Yasuko talking about it. What did you tell her? I told her that it was impossible. But even after you talked to her, she seemed a bit scared about the end of the world. Even though that's impossible. Okay. <laughs> we have practice tomorrow in the morning. Sure. <laughs> what kind of response is that? <laughs> what she's saying is that we can't come get you tomorrow, so don't sleep in. Oh, I see. Do you really understand? Clearly, it means I can sleep in, since the Wakatsuki sisters won't be around to bother me. No, you need to get up! You little... Don't worry, I won't be late. Because <laughs> I won't show up. <laughs> I really wonder about that. Those two disappeared into their house. <sighs> there's, not, there's been nothing but trouble. Even I was starting to get scared. What the hell is going on? Huh? Who's that? Someone was looking at me. I was about to say, if you pull some stalker bullshit with Takuji... What? That's... I knew it! I knew they were gonna do that! I knew that he was gonna appear. <sighs> That's Yuki, right? Okay. <gasps> Mamiya! Yo, have you been studying reason? <laughs> no. <laughs> Mamiya, why are you here? You're a being of the flesh. You need to study reason, like me. Look at this cool-ass magic I can do. Wahoo! Fireball! <laughs> Sooner or later, I'll know Excalibur, and you'll be dead. Ha! <laughs> Your flesh is certainly strong, but you need to study reason in order to know the world. You might even hit upon some consciousness that my reason is not. But you can't understand one such as me unless you study reason. And if you don't understand, you'll never even be able to imagine a higher consciousness. The what now? The Dialectical Staircase. Oh god. <laughs> Why do you have more creepy faces than you have regular faces? Actually, I think it's because we haven't seen your regular sprite outside of this menu. Assuming that's your regular sprite. Face toward higher consciousness! Ascend! <laughs> hey, wait! <laughs> nah, bitch, I'm flying! <laughs> Mommy had disappeared. He's faster than me. Was he always that fast? Was he? For a moment, it felt as if an electric current had run through my brain. It was almost like a headache. That feeling. I was probably just tired. <sighs> this was really turning into a strange day. <laughs> okay. Um. First, I checked my email. Hmm. Here it is. This gross one's probably from him. So... I clicked the link in Yokoyama Kiyoshi's, I remembered his name because it was in the email, message, <laughs> and went to the underground message board. Hello, this is the Secretariat for the Kita High message board, Sawayaka. Sawayaka. You have received an invitation to the Sawayaka message board from Yokoyama Kiyoshi. <laughs> message. Sup, this is Kiyoshi! Here's the invitation you asked for, go ahead and sign up! And don't forget about the party! A bunch of people from a certain famous college will be coming. It'll be crazy fun! Is that back when people still use emoticons? I mean, okay. <laughs> what a creepy message. So, to register, I just needed to click the link. This one, right? Hmm. Was it a good idea to use my real name? No, oh, but there was probably an administrator. Nah, who cares? I could just make up a name and register. It should be fine as long as it didn't sound fake. Maybe I should use a real person's name. How about... Shibata Katsuie. <laughs> My address was Owari Province, Aichi District, Kamiyashiro Village. Date of birth, second year of the Daie area. My age was automatically calculated. 487 years old, huh? Oh. <laughs> then a login ID and password. Then it looked like I need to be improved by an administrator. If the administrator checked for that name on the register, it might not get approved. But then I could just register with some other student's information. Or I could even use my own if I wanted. Well, it's not a big deal either way. Okay, finished. Done and done. <sighs> I collapsed on top of my bed. I'm really tired after all that. Probably because I ran around so much today and got... <laughs> psychologically molested by some weird dude. But still, people were scared. Yokoyama's little sister. 
Kagami and Tsukasa, and even me. We were all feeling anxious. We knew it was a load of crap, but it was still frightening. But I suppose that's what it means to be afraid. Well, I'd better head to bed. July 15th. Okay. Ah, oh, what a pain. Maybe because that guy was so slow bringing out my order. I'm assuming I can change the text box back now. Or should I just leave it? <sighs> but then I'd have to do more editing work with censoring if anything like that pops up. But it's like the text box doesn't show up for a second anyway, so it's not really that much of a big deal, but still. And, but if it shows up behind the text box, and still, yeah. I'll just leave it like this and change it when those long screens show up, and hopefully there's nothing I'd have to censor on top of that too, because then that would just be the worst. <laughs> All right, I looked at the clock. It was after 11, about the time when fourth period would be started. <laughs> Starting, rather, right? <laughs> um, also because the train was so so getting here, maybe? Or something like that. Though that still didn't explain all the last time, did it? And because the shower took so long, or something like that. I guess that's the reason I'm late. Oh, that's about, third period's over. Who just barely made it. I made it to morning classes, so I can just say my alarm clock didn't go off or something. Zap again. Where's the dude, man? <laughs> Vertigo again? Okay, black screen. Lately, I've been feeling dizzy all the time. Maybe I really am sick. No one's right there. Okay. Shut up! Oh. Okay, we have a CG. Kagami, Tsukasa, and somebody. Is it- is it Takuji? Is it Dude Man? Is it Kagami? Yeah. You're the one who needs to shut up! It is Takuji. What did you say, you whore? No, whore? You're one to talk, you little brat! What did you say? You dare say those words to one who has reached true enlightenment? You're the little brat! Why is he stammering? Don't fucking say that! What's happening? It looks like Kagami and Takaji were fighting. Alright, I'm gonna put my money on Kagami. <laughs> Don't say- wait, who- It's Kagami, okay. Don't say crap like that! Everyone's already scared as it is! It's not crap, it's the truth. Wait, sister, calm down. You too, Mamiya. I am calm. Aren't you the ones losing your calm? Tsukasa again, okay. Um, maybe. But could we please talk without raising our voices? Hmm, <laughs> Takaji, okay. <laughs> I'm not raising my voice. It simply sounds that way because your ears are not capable of comprehending the truth entering them. Okay, back to normal. Who the fuck is Ida? <laughs> the hell? <laughs> Everyone sit down, class is starting! <laughs> oh, it's a teacher. Okay, we have a long box again. Christ, I'm, I'm just gonna... Can I hotkey that? Is that possible? Is there like a hotkey for text box opacity? If there is, I'd like to know that. Who's talking? Yuki. <laughs> There's four characters with one of these. Five! Because of the teacher. <laughs> Mr. Ida, the world history teacher. Come on, why are you just standing around? Oh, yes, sir! Uh, oh... Everyone sit down! Class is starting! Mamiya, why are you still standing? What's wrong? Quit spacing out and sit down! Do I look like I'm spacing out? Come on, Mamiya! Your grades have fallen far enough! Would you quit asking stupid questions and sit down already? <laughs> A stupid question, is it? If you say so. Okay, class is starting. Turn to page 67. Today, we're covering the Roman Empire. Mr. Rita, something wrong, or would you like me to let, or would you like to let me start class already? What's wrong, Mamiya? Do you need to go to the bathroom? You really are one of the vulgar people. That's why you can't see the big pic picture. Did you say something, Mamiya? You don't even know that it's all about to end. It's all about to end? What are you going on about now? For instance, if we're on a sinking ship, would you be standing at the bow reciting facts about the Roman Empire? 
I'm gonna change the text box back now again. Even though the game's probably about to fucking troll me about that. Mommy, uh, what are you saying? It's a question. A question. Would you be talking about some trivia from thousands of years ago while the ship sank around you? History isn't just trivia, and this isn't a boat. It's a classroom, and it's not sinking. Ushimaru's voice works pretty good for, like, every aggressive male teacher in the world. Yep. <laughs> I see. It's not just a boat. It, it's not a boat. It's not sinking. And your description of long-dead emperors isn't just trivia. That's right! Well, Mamiya, have any more complaints? I'll hop this chalk at you if you don't sit down. I have no complaints. It's rather obvious that a vulgar peasant such as yourself wouldn't be able to see the truth. After all, no one complains that cats and dogs can't do arithmetic, do they? That's it! Eat chalk! <laughs> Mamiya, are you feeling alright? Feeling alright? Whatever do you mean? Maybe you should ask that of yourself. The one doing something so meaningless at a time like this. What do you mean, meaningless? Please consider this. The world may have been created by a demon just ten seconds ago, and everything we call history was planted in our heads by that demon. That's impossible. There's plenty of historical evidence that contradicts that idea. Then maybe the demon made that too. Maybe it planted the historical evidence. Mamiya, are you sure you're feeling alright? What's wrong? Even if it wasn't a demon, this textbook may simply be a collection of humanity's convenient rationalizations. From ten seconds ago? Yeah, good one. Time doesn't exist! Ah, cool. So we got a nihilist on our hands. <laughs> the truth may be that there are much greater things in this world, and someone wrote this book in order to conceal them. Who's the class representative? Me, sir. Please go to the staff room and ask them to send Miss Kiyokawa. Yes, understood. The moment the class representative passed by Takaji, he pushed her violently and she crumpled to the floor. Ah! Mommy, I you! Not back to that shit again. <laughs> Alrighty. Booyah. You little! Sister! Kagami stood defiantly in front of Mamiya. What's wrong with you? How dare you hit a girl? Gender equality, ha ha ha. Someone's probably taken this clip of this game and just posted it on YouTube with the title something along the lines of Epic Gender Equality Moment in Anime because fucking why do videos like that get so many clicks? It's all just the same Konosuba clip over and over and over again. It's ridiculous. It doesn't matter whether she's a boy or a girl. That you're doing this at all, sitting here and playing along with this farce when everything is about to end. It's absurd. Every single person here has turned their back on the truth. Cut it out, Mamiya. Are you okay? I'm... Oh, wait. He was saying that to the girl. Got it. I'm fine. I just fell because he surprised me. <laughs> no, I pushed you. <laughs> Mamiya, apologize. Why would I do that? Mamiya, do you understand what you're saying? What do you mean the world is ending? I heard a lot of the students have been scared of something lately. Are you the one spreading those rumors? It means the world is ending, that's all. The end of everything. You could call it the final destination. It's no rumor, it's merely the truth. <sighs> then July 21st rolls around and everyone's just like, hmm, boy who cried wolf. <laughs> you are a weak human being, a small human being, and therefore you cannot even lay eyes on me. Mamiya, come over here! <laughs> so you intend to use violence because you can't win with logic? You're going to just push someone to the ground. Oh, God. Ugh. Oh, boy. Who's talking? Yuki. Huh? Ah! No one can understand what had just happened. Just said a loud sound echoed through the classroom, and then the teacher fell down covered in blood. Huh? We were too confused to understand that Mommy had just struck him with a flower vase. That's... It's just like the email said. Email? That word seemed out of place, but before I could ask what she meant... Ah! Someone screamed, sending the rest of the class into a panic. What just... Is... Is he dead? Okay. <laughs> the fuck? What's up with this dude? <laughs> what is his deal? Who fuck... Who fucking put crack in his morning antidepressants? They made a lot of noise over the collapsed teacher, but no one did anything to Mami Atakaji except sneak glances from the corners of their eyes. Because they were afraid of him? Because they believed they mustn't look at his face? But Mami Atakaji simply stood there and smiled. 
What's wrong? You seem awfully scared of something. He's pleading! Sister, we have to help him! Was that her again? Ah! Tsukasa! When Tsukasa tried to go over to the teacher, Takaji threw her to the side. She fell to the ground. Mommy Takuji! You son of a- Oh, if it isn't Minakami. It appears you're no better than the rest of the poor little lambs here. Your heart is thick with fear. You should just stand back and watch in fear like you've been doing. And then you shall feel the flames of hell licking at your flesh. Mamiya! What, are you going to hit me? You're going to bully me? Just like Yuki Tomosane and the rest of humanity have! Who's Yuki Tomosane? Huh? Again, what's this feeling? When I was near Mamiya, I got dizzy. Why did it keep happening? Mark my words, all ye who quiver in fear! Oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> all life shall end on the 20th! That is the absolute truth! Both Shirayama and Takashima died for this truth! Death! That is the message of prophecy! Death! That is the absolute truth! Why is death the message that leads to prophecy? Because the foolish attempt to conceal death. So we must speak of that which is concealed. That which conceals death. The first is education. The second is the media. <laughs> no one's gonna vote for you, Takaji. Shut up! <laughs> In countries such as this, mandatory education has become commonplace. In our society, the media has swelled and transformed into the highest authority in the world. We have a host of taboos implanted into our minds by public education and through the mass media. The greatest taboo of all is to think upon death. We have to put aside any thought of death. We are obliged to act as if our daily lives will continue for eternity. And the reason is because everything is powerless. Everything is meaningless before the unreasoning specter of death. That is why education and the media try to disguise the true meaning of death. <laughs> okay. The death they in intimate to us is but a phantasm on the far shores. Something with which we have no relation. It has been reduced to a mere toy. Something you can enjoy without worrying that it may ever strike you. But the reality that everyone knows is that every single day, death creeps ever closer to all the people on the planet. Death is reality itself. Mamiya, you- oh, he is alive. <laughs> cool. <laughs> Mr. Hina, he's okay. You're wrong. What have I said that's wrong? That religious nonsense. You? Did you hear that? Just now, this man called my thoughts religious nonsense. I'm just doing that in case I have, I want to screenshot this CG for a thumbnail. <laughs> As if to say I was a madman. That's wrong. Am I wrong? To ponder upon death. Has religion not advanced thought on morality for the past several thousand years? Has metaphysics not? In other words, that which reeks of religion, the action of contemplating death seems to him the action of a madman. Am I wrong? You're wrong. You sound like a cultist. Oh, really? What a strange thing you've just said. What part of what I'm saying seems crazy to you? I don't know, but... If you ask me, it seems like you have unfounded conviction for that dogma which you call common sense. What are you talking about? You can't resist attaching the label crazy to that which you cannot understand. You declare anything which would overthrow your common sense to be the words of a madman. You're twisting my words, Mamiya. You... Please, someone call a homeroom teacher. Someone! He desperately appealed to the students, but not a single one moved. Every person in the room was dominated by the atmosphere. Modern society has reduced death to an abstraction. It is a society that views death as a taboo. The only ones who could speak of that as correct are slaves who have not even the capacity to think. In previous generations, death was the most important subject of philosophical thought, was it not? Was death not the matter of utmost concern? And despite that, modern governments and societies have treated it as if it was irrelevant to our lives. Cogme, okay. You're labeling their deaths with your own selfish reasoning. Selfish, you say? It's sophistry. It's complete nonsense. I've heard.
heard that theory about society covering up death before. Let's say you're right about that one. Even then, what you're saying about those two deaths signifying something is nothing but fabrication. It's nonsense, a delusion. I see. You're pretty smart for a whore. Stop calling me that! <laughs> I suppose this is what you're trying to say. You want me to show you proof that the meaning I've claimed for their death is veracious. Veracious. How do I pronounce this word? Who wrote this script? <laughs> proof? Are you stupid? There's nothing you could show us that would prove that. After all, no matter how you look at it, you're just spouting fantasies. Fantasies, huh? Do you know how we differentiate between silence and charlatanry? Charlatanry? Sci science and charlatanry? Yes. How would one differentiate science from pseudoscience? It's obvious that pseudoscience is fake. You can't just say it's obvious that X is Y when that statement has no logical basis. <laughs> what is this dude? The difference between science and pseudoscience lies in whether or not the theory makes novel predictions. Novel predictions? I'm assuming this is always Kagami, it is. The word prediction sounds almost religious, doesn't it? To put it simply, a novel prediction is a truthful prediction that may appear strange to the layman, but can be derived from the theory. Okay. This dude, he's going on a whole fucking tirade. <laughs> Einstein made many predictions. Black holes, the curvature of space, those are predictions derived from his theory of relativity. To the people who couldn't understand his theory, they seemed like very strange predictions. But they were all correct. Do you know why? If his theory was correct. Yes, the theory of relativity was correct. And so he was able to derive correct predictions from it. In other words, if the predictions I make based on my theory, if those predictions come true, then my theory is correct. Predictions? Okay, yeah. <laughs> Therefore, I shall now make several novel predictions. And as they bear fruit one by one, you will all quiver with fear. You will see that I am correct. Yeah, and it's all dri that's all drivel. That's Kagami. <laughs> that's all drivel. <laughs> God sacrificed these two so that I could be reborn. The first was Shirayama Tsubasa, and the second was Takashi Mizakuro. God sacrificed them so that I could be reborn. I have been reborn! As what? The Savior. Yes, as the Savior! The world will end in five days, but that is an omen of greater things. An omen that the world will be reborn. Those not saved along with the old world will fall into the depths of a hell to suffer for eternity. An eternity of torment. Everyone knows that the world is pervaded by lies. That the truth is hidden. The foolish speak of equality. But everyone knows that the world is not equal. The foolish speak of freedom. But everyone knows that there is no freedom in the world. The foolish speak of love. But everyone knows that love is traitorous. <laughs> the foolish say that you must not kill. But everyone knows that the world is brimming with murderers. The foolish say that you must not lie, but everyone knows that the foolish themselves are lying. Those who swallow the lies of the foolish make fools of themselves. Yes, they're lies. They were all lies. That the world has always existed, and that the world will continue to exist forevermore. They are all lies. The path we walk leads to the abyss. The world will end. It will surely end. This is the truth. As proof, I shall make three predictions. Firstly, the thickness of death in the air will be affirmed with yet another death. Secondly, a large number of people will witness the death. Thirdly, the deceased will speak of the ultimate demise. Mommy had dashed out of the classroom. Everyone was speechless at his sudden departure. So, Mr. Cameraman, do you think that that was good enough for a social experiment? Yeah, that was cool. That's going to get a lot of views. Hell yeah, where's my pay? <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Alright. Well, I think this might be a really weird place to end the episode, but my dad should be coming home soon with food. Yeah. <laughs> that was a wild episode. What the fuck, man? <laughs> okay. Wow. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Wowie. <laughs> okay, yeah. Hmm. So, dude man is crazy. Cool. <laughs> Alright, uh, and about the question that I asked earlier this episode, I just feel the need to bring this up. Be I was wondering to myself, 
wondering whether this dude is going to be more of a Nagito Kokichi So type character, or like an actual, actual villain. So, uh, yeah. Don't tell me, because that is what we call spoilers. So, yeah, that, it should go without saying, but still. <laughs> so what I'm getting from this so far is... I'm getting definite Higurashi vibes. More so than, like, Umineko. Granted, I haven't read a lot of visual novels. <laughs> and I didn't even read the visual novel version of Higurashi. But the way Takaji was describing shit... He kind of feels like Rena, sorta. Like talking a bunch of weird sound and nonsense. Like it's some Hinamizawa syndrome bullshit or more like Oyashiro stuff. I don't know. <laughs> but still, it's wild. <laughs> Absolutely crazy. <laughs> so yeah, I'm, I look forward to continuing this game. This is this is some good shit. So yeah, that's gonna be it for this episode, guys. If you liked it, then be sure to press the like button, and if you didn't like it, then fuck you too. Remember to subscribe, follow me on Twitter, and hit that notification bell to stay up to date on all my videos and stuff. And as always, my name is Godzi, and I will see you all next time. Goodbye!